staring out the window here of my motel room in Santa Fe and looking at the mountains in the distance, a little snow on the tops of them. Not really tall because um, I'm from up in Colorado where we have taller mountains, but still they're they're beautiful and it's it's nice to look out at, at this town. It's really a beautiful town. If you've never been here, come out here and check it out. But that's if you can. And that's kind of what I want to mention too. I mentioned about, and that is the extreme states of anxiety. The extreme limitations from our anxiety that so many of us have. I, mine, mine on average is moderate. Um, yes, lately it's been really heightened because of this drive and everything. And I, um, But I mean, I know people that cannot leave their house people who almost can't leave a room people that couldn't get on a plane for the life of them I don't like to fly but if I have to I would get on a plane people who have anxiety that is paralyzing completely paralyzing I've had tastes of this I've had this off and on but on average my anxiety is more chronic and moderate but for some people it's much more extreme than that and I want you to know that I'm here for those individuals too and want to help out I'm pacing in my room right now because this is one of those topics I think is better to be up and moving around for than than to be sitting down um, I think a little better sometimes when I'm moving around but I've worked with a lot of people that were in extreme states of anxiety when I was doing my Benzo Free podcast, when I, when I do my Benzo Free podcast and work with people from that world. And just so everybody knows real quick, that's a group of people who have come off of benzodiazepines, which are the anti-anxiety drug classes. And, and myself and many others have gone through extreme states of symptoms and hyper anxiety and so many things. It's just if you're curious, go over and check that out. But I, I, I've experienced this and seen this. And, you know, there was, there was, you know, people that I wanted to visit and some people that can't even visit with me when I come through. Not because they don't want to be part of the podcast or they're embarrassed to or, or you know, are just not comfortable with it. I totally get that and totally respect that. But just who can't meet in person. They're so paralyzed. Yet they can communicate with me freely. And it's like, I just, I can do that so easily. But the thought of meeting with me would be more than they can imagine. And for those people, I want to give them some hope. I, mean, I think we all know that benzodiazepines and Z drugs and those medications that we have for them, even some SSRIs and SNRIs, um, may not be the answer, okay? Because they can lead to so many other complications, as I unfortunately discovered, and so many other people have to. But there are a lot of options out there. There's therapy, of course, and actually CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, has shown a lot of success with anxiety. Hang on. <coughs> Dry throat there for a second. But that's probably one of the first ones. Meditation. I tell you, this really, it's not easy to get into. And I think so often with meditation, we focus on, it's not working. I've tried it five times and it's not working. Or I can't meditate. My brain won't shut off. Or And I get that. And Meditation is never perfect. I think that's the misnomer we have out there. If you want to try to meditate, it's not about getting it perfect. You probably never will. I never did. Meditation, to me, is about bringing it down a notch. Bringing your anxiety down a notch. Bringing your worries down a notch. Bringing your depression down a notch. That's where I think it comes in handy. And meditation is really good for that. I used to always say that, hey, I can turn off the, you know, the 12 things going on in my head, the 12 voices talking in my head and bring it down to, you know, 
eight or ten. And that's huge, you know, that's huge because that's progress. I never got to one. <laughs> I think maybe one time I got, I did a counting meditation and I hit this nirvana state or something where my, my brain was almost blank. I think I've done that once. And I've been meditating now for 10 years, off and on. I haven't done a lot lately. I got to get back to it. And that's what I'm doing on this trip. I started to meditate again and I've been starting to meditate because it's so beneficial, yet we just get so busy. And I let my my key things, you know, um, go because I got so busy. I was on way too many teams and research teams and organizations and conferences and everything. And I was just so happy that everybody wanted to have my involvement. And I didn't want to. That's just it. It's like you have this extreme fear of, you know, not being part of things. And I have that. That's one of my anxieties. But for some people, doing one of those is beyond what you all can deal with. And I hear you. I'm there. I'm with you. I I get it. I don't I don't know how it became on the Benzo podcast, but I've had many people tell me that they turn on my podcast when they're getting a little anxious or or when they're trying to sleep or when they're alone. Just hearing my voice has been comforting. I'm amazed by that. I don't know why it is. But if it is, then hell, I'm not going to stop doing this. In fact, I'm starting this new podcast. If just having a voice of somebody who's also dealing with this shit, who swears on occasion on this new podcast, <laughs> and is struggling and is going to learn as we're going through it with you, if that's going to help a little bit, even if my voice puts you to sleep at night, I have no problem with that. If it's helping. But for those of you who have those extreme states of depression and anxiety, I want to break down again right now thinking about it. I've been a little emotional lately because I've worked with so many of you who have been in that state before. And I know what it's like. I know what it's like for them going through it. I know what it's been like for me when I've had had that for shorter periods of time. But there's hope. We mentioned meditation. I mentioned CBT. There's breathing exercises you can do to help. There's um, EMDR, there's all kinds of therapies and techniques and books. Man, I would just read books galore. And it was funny because in part it was the lessons I got from the books and I'd put a few of those lessons into action. But actually just reading the book calmed me because I was hearing from somebody else who also has struggled with anxiety. There's some great books, and one other thing I'm going to do several times probably on this podcast is when I get home, go through my bookshelf and talk about some of the books that really meant a lot and some of those great books out there. And if you have ones you want to send to me, I mean, send me recommendations for or recommend a book, I'll check it out because I do think books help a lot. And it could be a book on tape. You don't have to, if you don't read well, if you're not a nonfiction reader, then do a book on tape or find a good podcast on anxiety. They're out there. I need to start looking at those too. There's other ones out there. Gosh, mine's not the only one. And mine, I guarantee you, is not the best one. I'm not trying to be the best. I'm not holding myself to that criteria. I'm just trying to be me. And if by being me, I can help out people, then it's all worth it. Yes, I'm still pacing. I think I've worn a part out here on this rug. But in case you think this whole podcast is all just about people with superficial anxiety, please know that's not true. We're mostly geared on people developing good life skills, learning to live with this modern world that's going so freaking fast that we just can't keep up. And they're just trying to manage life. 
to people who have serious anxiety conditions. And I will always refer you to professionals to go seek help for those. I do think that's important. But maybe we can also help you out too. Maybe we can help you out too. That'd be nice. But there's help. There's hope. You don't have to live this way the rest of your life. I have seen so many people improve. I've seen seen so many people's lives changed. Sometimes just a small little change, but that means the world to them. Sometimes significant changes. And sometimes they didn't change, but they just got some comfort from knowing that somebody else, else is out there and deals with some of the stuff they deal with. This world we're in is so isolating. It's like it's designed to pull us apart, to get us mad at each other, to separate us. And that's not helping anyone. Maybe, just maybe, by me sharing with you all my flaws and screw-ups and ignorances and (laughs) everything else, and opinions now and then, Maybe just maybe I can help unify a bit. Not unify, but connect. That's really what it's about is being, is connecting. So I'm going to get this wrong. I'm going to get it wrong many times. But I still look at this podcast as I'm not the teacher here. I love being a teacher and I've been a teacher many times, but I'm not the teacher here. I'm a student going through it with you. This is a study group. There you go. This is a study group at school. You ever see the TV show Community? I thought that was a funny one. So um, I'm one of those people in that group, you know, and we're, we're in a study group together and we're all figuring this out together. I'm just the one doing the talking. <laughs> but I want to hear from you so I can share what you have to. It's just... I'm trying to figure out how to make my life better. And I'm going to do that with you. But I'm not coming in as an expert. I've been doing this for a while on the benzo side. And I've been working now, doing all this for about 10 years now. But that definitely doesn't make me an expert. There are so many other people out there that are so better trained at this and have formal education. Mine's all anecdotal just from personal experience and working with individuals who have gone through this. I learned a few things and those things I think might help. But most of this is about the things I haven't learned yet that we're going to learn together. And dealing with chronic anxiety, dealing with severe anxiety is definitely one of those that I think we can focus on. Hey, this is D. Sorry for this brief interruption. I do need to remind everyone that this podcast is for informational purposes only and should never be considered medical, psychological, or professional health advice of any kind. If you or someone you know is dealing with significant mental health issues, please seek professional help. Resources can be found in our show notes and on our website at unevenpodcast.com. And now, back to the podcast. So here's my recommendation to you. Not recommendation. Here's a tip. Use it or don't. It is up to you. Do one small thing tomorrow. One small step. Just a tiny one. One small step toward getting yourself to feel a little less anxious. Maybe meditate for five minutes. Just try. Do a very basic mantra. You know, just breathe in, breathe out, and focus on that breath for five minutes. Just focus on your breathing. If your mind wanders, gently bring it back to just focusing on your breath. Just in slowly and out slowly. That's simple. That's simple. Start really basic. Do that for five minutes. Or go to the store and get a book. Or go go online and order a book on anxiety. One that appeals to you that might help you 
That's just a small step. The ordering, the process of ordering that book is a small step. Check out the podcasts out there and maybe pick up one of those. Maybe even look into therapy. You know, even just start to look into therapy. Just to say, oh, you know, see if maybe your company covers therapy for you. Or somebody else does. If you have insurance, that'll cover it. Just take that one step. That one step forward and see how you feel about that. And then maybe we can build on that. And maybe I can take my own <laughs> advice and do the same. And I will. I'm going to go grab a bite here in Santa Fe. i got to hit the road to finally get home tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'll chat with you again. Maybe I will here before the night closes out, but if not, I'll talk to you soon. Just hang in there. This life has all kinds of ups and downs. It's a long life. And even if you feel really down right now, as I have lately, know it's not going to stay that way all the time. It does get better. Hang in there and I'll talk to you soon.